Hello and welcome to another special episode of the Community Producers on Shaw Spotlight. I'm Christina Krzykowski and once again I'm recording this here at my home in Castlegar. As the world changes around us, we continue to look at how the COVID-19 pandemic affects all of us here in the Kootenays, as well as our local businesses and organizations. Our first piece is an interview with Kootenay West MLA Katrina Conroy, where she speaks to what she's been hearing from local constituents, plus shares what is happening in her ministry on a provincial level. I, I am hearing from local constituents and, and businesses and, and some of the biggest issues, actually one of the biggest issues that came out at first in the region was why aren't we being told if there actually is a diagnosis of, of COVID here in our constituency, where is it, where in the communities and, and, and it was really important to get that message out to people that um, it, it's, it's an issue of confidentiality but, and it's also an issue of it's everywhere. And we all have to take the precautions. You know, we all have to be washing our hands regularly. We all have to be social distancing like we are now. Um, we all have to make sure when we go to the grocery stores that we're social distancing. And, and you know, we need to make sure that, that we follow all those precautions so we don't get a, inundated with, with cases here in, in the Kootenays. And, and it, it, it is here. You know, we do know that there are people in our region who have been diagnosed. Um, thankfully, no one has died in our area, but there have been people who have died in, in the Interior Health Authority. And we just, you know, we all need to be conscientious of that fact. So, so that was one of the bigger issues that kept coming to me. Um, another issue that people talked a lot about was supporting the businesses who did stay open, but also supporting those who couldn't stay open and particularly the ones that did stay open. So I, I, I did get um, questions and calls from people who said, why are they staying open? That's ridiculous and this isn't right. And, and, and some of them were small businesses who wanted to do takeout. And I am incredibly grateful to those restaurants that stayed open because, you know, you, it is nice to be able to support them and it's nice to be able to have a, a meal that you didn't have to cook. And, and so we have been trying at least one once or twice a week to, to get takeout from the different restaurants. And I, I want to thank all of them that have stayed open and, and who are providing that service because it is really important to have that. And also those people need the work, they need the jobs. And we want the businesses to be open when this is over, when all those businesses can open. So that is something as a cabinet we're looking at. You know, what what can we do now to ensure that, that, that we can safely say to people, yes, you can open your business, you have to follow these rules, and we know we're, we're all listening to Dr. Bonnie, Bonnie Henry, who has been amazing in leading us through this. She has inspired every province to do as she is doing, to, to make those daily announcements or as they're needed to update us on what's happening. And, and, and she's been really amazing in, in, in teaching us what, what we should and shouldn't do. So now we are thinking that through going, okay, how do we move forward? What we're looking at is that curve. You know, has that curve come down enough where we can start to say to businesses, to schools, to, to colleges and universities, yes, we can now provide those services. Um, and I think schools is a big one. I, you know, I talk to a lot of parents and I have uh, grandchildren myself and, and uh, my, you know, my kids themselves who said we never meant to be teachers. We, everybody loves their teachers now. And, but it, it, it's tough. It's tough doing online learning. Uh, it's tough for high school kids, never mind you know kids in kindergarten or elementary school but you know we, we need to make sure that the the plans that we are putting in place are going to ensure everybody's safe we need to ensure the teachers are safe the people that work in the schools are safe we need to ensure the kids are safe mm -hmm. and we know kids even though they could be a carrier um, are not susceptible to COVID. They are not, they don't get as sick as adults do. But those little ones could be a carrier and we might not know that. And they could take that home to mom or dad or grandma or grandpa. So, you know, we need to make sure that, that what we're doing we're going to keep people safe and so we are seriously looking at this we are having um, well we usually have weekly cabinet meetings we're now in having them twice a week and we are moving forward and and we hope to be announcing in the very near f future how we are going to start to uh, open things up how we are going to start to you know reinvigorate the economy because that's that's a really big one right now there's a number of issues that I'm hearing from my ministry. Of course, we're trying to ensure that youth in care, youth aging out of care, are getting the right services, getting the supports they need. So we have brought in some measures um, 
everything has to go to Treasury Board so that we can get approval to spend more money or get more money. So we, we've done that and we've made sure that there's supports in place for, for youth that have aged out of care of turn 19 or that are in the process of doing that or are on a, an agreement with young adults which is a program that supports youth once they age out of care and they're going to school or getting life skills and making sure that we have the supports in place for them. So that was really important to me. Um, another issue is of course um, parents who have children with special needs. That That is a big one. We have over 30,000 kids in, on our caseload that have special needs in this province. For kids with particularly profound uh, needs and challenges who were going to school. Parents were getting those that respite during the day while the kids were at school. They were getting the services and supports they need and they're not getting those. So we are working really closely with the Ministry of Education to ensure that um, potentially we can get those kids back in school sooner than, than the, the other kids. Um, we are, the schools have been open to parents who are essential service providers, nurses, doctors, people that work in hospitals, um, uh, ambulance, uh, people like paramedics, you know, people like that. So we are looking at uh, trying, and some school districts have already done that, and we have educational assistants who are reaching out to those families and helping them. We've also brought in financial supports for families to so they can get more respite if they can if they can find it which is always an issue but also get supports like uh, counseling um, on the phone counseling we have expanded our counseling services there's a program called ease and I just gapped on what the acronym is for but you can uh, parents can look it up it, it's uh, ease of accessing um, supports uh, through education but it, it, it's uh, it supports for kids that are um, might be showing anxiety at this time because we're hearing that from parents too that kids are a little freaked out I mean they're you know we're all talking about it they see it on the news they go into the grocery store I had a grandson coughing in the grocery store the other day and a uh, woman glared at him and he looked up and he said I don't have COVID and he's six and he knew what you know and, and it was like oh my gosh you know so these little ones are they're, they're worried about it too and they hear parents talking and, and parents that aren't working they're at home they're thinking you know some of them have qualified for the fi the financial benefits both federally and and provincially and and some haven't so you know that that's a concern for families too so we're definitely hearing that right across the province and we're working really hard to put uh, programs into place we've just announced that Kids that are um, kids with autism who um, are turning six, that there's a transition you go in, in the ministry, you, you get uh, a certain amount of funds w if your child's five to six or zero to five. When you turn six and you're in the school system, you are getting more supports from the school system, so you transition to a less amount of money. And then again, when you turn 19 and age out of, out of care, so to speak, from the ministry. So we're allowing parents to um, have three extra months to utilize funds to get the services they need if they come into that age frame. So we're, we're doing programs like that to try to help families because, yeah, it, it, there's concerns all over the province and families are reaching out and, and just wanting those supports. One of the things I would say to people is to go to our gov.bc.ca website, so gov.bc.ca, and backslash COVID. And it's got all of the programs there, whether it's the financial supports, whether it's the social supports, all of those programs are there. You can look online and you can see what, what can I utilize, what do I need to, to help me get through this and to help my kids get through this. You know, if people have questions, you know, please call my office. You know, uh, we will get back to you as soon as we can. You know, we are answering the phones, we are taking messages, um, we're available by email. And I, I just remind people to, you know, wash their hands, stay safe, do that social distancing and and know that this is you know this is not the this is not forever that uh, this too shall pass but that you know that it could last a while and and we just need to be really respectful of all those things and and keep everybody safe and that for me is a bottom line to try to make sure we're keeping everybody safe and and that we can help everybody as much as we can and get back to some of the what we would consider normal as we move into the summer months.